Well, God is doing something new. Say it with me. God is doing something new. In Isaiah uh, chapter 43, verse 19, it says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Again, from the very beginning, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I thought about that. I mean, Lord, if you did, could do that, you can do anything. You can do anything. Some things look impossible for it to be new. But man, when God gets on the scene and he says, listen, if I say it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's going to spring forth. Amen. Say, behold, behold, I will do a new thing. So I looked up, what does behold mean? It means to fix the eyes upon, to see with attention, to observe with care. And so I thought, well, what God is really saying is watch attentively so you don't miss it. Watch attentively what I am doing, the new thing that I'm doing. Because sometimes God is doing a new thing and we don't see it. But can I tell you, if he said it's going to spring up, it's going to spring up. Amen? Amen. He's doing a new thing. So when God said, I will do a new thing, I thought about that. And he didn't say, well, maybe I will. He said, I will. And if God says, I will, what do you think is going to happen? He will. He will do a new thing. And I thought, well, that's a declaration. That's a promise that he's making to us. So we can say in our, in our own lives, when things don't look so good, we can go back to the word and say, but God said, behold, I am doing a new thing. And sometimes you just have to speak it into your environment. Amen. So I thought about the new thing. It is his nature to do new things. I thought about our graduates they are really entering into a brand new season. And they need to know that God is doing a new thing in their lives. And it's good. So in chapter uh, 43, verse 19, it says, Now it shall spring forth. So spring forth means to sprout. It means it's already begun. It's already started. Regardless if you can see it or not, it is already happening. And I thought about Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. It says, being confident, confident of this very thing, that he who has begun, it's already begun, a good work in you, he will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, so I just got to get on board with Jesus. I just got to get on board with the word and say, okay, God, if you said it's already began to sprout, then that means it's coming up. Amen. It means it's on the way up. It may just be a little bit, but it's on the way up. And so for each of us, the new means different things. What do you, what is in your life that you need it to be new? Is it healing in your body, in your emotions, maybe healing in your heart? Is it your relationship with God? You need it to be new and exciting, a fresh walk with God. We should all say amen to that. Amen. amen. Do you need wisdom? Do you need a new vision? Do you need new passion? We should all say yes to that. Do you need a new anointing? Oh, yeah, I do, God. Yeah, yeah, if anybody does. Do you need new, new finances? Yeah. Amen. Do you need your future to be bright? Can I tell you, God's got it. God's got, God's got it. He's got your past. He's got your present. And he's got your future. God has got it. Do you need new favor? Do you need new energy and vitality? 
Amen. Look at you. <laughs> I hit I hit a button. <laughs> Do you need new energy? Yeah. Yes, Jesus. We are ready for that new energy right now in Jesus' name. New vitality. Do you need new peace? Yeah. Mental well-being. Emotional well-being. Do you need new direction? How about some new joy? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. The new, behold, I am doing a new thing. What about a new way of thinking? What about a new way of doing? What about a new hunger for prayer? A new hunger for the word? A new hunger for worship? A new hunger to serve? A new hunger to be used by God? A new hunger to witness of the good news of Jesus Christ? What about the new? So I gave you a whole bunch of things. And God wants to bring the new that you need tonight. What is it that you need? You know, maybe it's just with your children. You need just some, some, some new joy, new peace, new energy. You need it all. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Well, I want to tell you, it's already started. The fact that you came tonight, the new that you want is already started. Let me ask you, if, you, if I was to ask you, Name, and I'm, you don't have to say it out loud, but I just want you to lift your head, hand. Is there something that you'd say in your own life, Lord, I desperately, desperately want the new all over the house. We all need something new, but praise the Lord, he, is, he has got it for us tonight. So as I thought about a new thing, when a new thing comes in, sometimes you have to let go of the old thing. Sometimes you have to move the old thing out and let the new come in. And when I thought about that. Well, if God is doing something new, that means a change needs to happen. That means a change is getting ready to take place. And am I comfortable with that change? Usually not. But if I know that if I allow the change, the process to happen, that the good is getting ready, the greater is getting ready to come into my life, then I'll say, okay, okay God, go ahead and make the change. Would you, would you agree? Go ahead, God, and make the change. So I thought, okay, change. The greatest change is a heart change. If he changes my heart, he can change what's all around me. He can change what's coming out from me. He can change every area of my life if I allow him to do a heart change. So I thought the greatest change is a heart change. Would you agree? It means the wrong mindsets, wrong attitudes, wrong behavior, the change from the negative to the positive. When we're around negative people, we're saying, oh, God, please change them. <laughs> oh, you guys are acting so righteous. <laughs> Isn't it true? When you're around the negative, you're like, I, do I really, really, really have to answer that call? Do I really, really, really have to? Uh-huh. I hear you. It's the truth. So, but if we allow God to do a heart change, and then I thought, okay, the greatest change is a heart change. It's to be awakened in our walk with God. I want the new, so I want to be awakened to my walk with God, and I want to be alive, spirit, soul, and body. Amen? I think about in Psalms uh, chapter 51, this was David, and he cried out to God, and he said, Create in me, verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your generous spirit. 
oh man, to have a heart like David, that we can say, Lord, come in and create a clean heart within me. And for some of us, it, our heart may be good, but maybe we need God to come in and create something else in us. Create in me a desire to. Create in me the power to not. But create whatever you're doing, God. Create something new in me. Create it new. And then I thought, okay, here David is seeking after God. And he's saying, Lord, my life before you is an open book. Just create in me what you want in me. That's what he was really saying. Create in me what you really want in me. And I turn to Isaiah chapter 58, verse 8. And in this chapter, they're talking about a fast. But fasting is us seeking after God. In verse 8, it says, Then shall your light break forth like the morning, and your healing, your restoration, and the power of a new life. Say new life. New life. Shall spring forth speedily. Speedily. And your righteousness, your rightness, your justice, and your right relationship with God shall go before you. Now listen to this. Conducting you to peace and prosperity. And the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. That means the glory of the Lord shall be the protector behind you. That no matter what tries to come behind you, because you have sought the Lord with all of your heart, that the glory of God, that it protects you from all the wiles of the devil. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when it says, then shall your light break forth, what is, is saying? When your heart is after me and you got a clean heart before me and you, you're wanting the new, you're wanting all that God has for you, that when your light shall break forth, that means happiness is going to break forth, prosperity is going to break forth, your peace, your restoration, everything you're asking him for. But I thought in the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. We need to just think on that for a minute. The glory of the Lord. When I think about the glory of the Lord, I'm thinking the presence of God. The presence of the Lord. That where I go, his presence goes. His presence surrounds me. His presence protects me. His presence leads me. Man, Lord, we want the new. We want the new thing that you have for us, your glory and your presence. Let's look at verse 11 in that same chapter. When we seek after God like David did, it says, And the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy you in drought and in dry places, and make strong your bones, and you shall be, yea, you shall be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Hallelujah, amen, and amen, and amen. Whoa, that I am like a watered garden, praise the Lord Jesus, and that my bones are strong. Inside out, all is good. Amen? Amen? And so I thought about David when he said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. That was David's cry. His, his cry was, Lord, you are the creator of heaven and earth. I need you. I want you to listen up. I need you to create in me what I don't currently have. I need you to create in me what I don't currently have. When David said, Lord, create in me, he was very specific. Lord, create in me a clean heart. And we, ladies, we've got to be really specific. What do we want God to create in us brand new? 
And I just say, Lord, I want more of you. When we were singing it earlier, I mean that I want more of your glory. I want more of your power. I want more of your anointing. I want more of your favor. I want more of your presence. But we have got to be specific. When we say, Lord, behold, I do a new thing. We get the new thing because we're rec we recognize it, we hunger for it, and we seek after it. We pursue it, and we embrace it. And so would you just say in your own heart, God, uh, create in me a new, create in me a new, come on, just tell him in your spirit, create in me a new, we're yours, God. But I thought about David, his heart was, Lord, create in me a new heart. And I think about us, ladies, that we need to say, Lord, Create in us a brand new fire for you. Create in us a brand new excitement for you. If you're dry in the Lord, that is not his will. Man, I'm going to tell you, if you don't desire him, his word, his house, that is not his will. The devil is putting something on you that doesn't belong on you, and you can shake it off of you in the name of Jesus, and you say, God, I want your fresh fire. I want your fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, cry out for him for a minute. Lord, I want more of you. I want more and more and more of you. Hallelujah. So I thought David sought the help of the creator. And do you know the creator of heaven and earth lives on the inside of you? He knows everything about you. And because this was exciting to me when I thought about it, because he lives on the inside of me, I have amazing cre creativity in me because the creator of heaven and earth lives on the inside of me. We have creative ability. So whatever you need to be new, God is at work in you to bring it to pass. David said, Lord, create a new heart. And when you do that, Lord, don't stop there, but renew a steadfast spirit in me. And when he said that, he was saying, Lord, don't stop at just creating a clean heart in me. Now I want you to create an unrelentless spirit within me that I don't quit, that I don't get up, that I stay the path, that I stay the course. I want to have a made-up mind, God, and I refuse to quit and I refuse to retreat in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whoa, David was serious. And then he said, Lord, if you're going to do all that, go ahead and restore to me my joy. Give me my joy back. And the word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. David wanted a new heart. He wanted a steadfast spirit. He wanted an unrelenting spirit. And he wanted the joy of the Lord. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Amen. Wow. So I want to tell you one more time, God's got it. He is your answer. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31, it says, Have you not known and have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, that's who you got in you, the creator of the ends of the earth. He neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Now listen, verse 29. Whatever you need, when we talk about this, you say, Lord, give it to me. He gives, would you read it with me? He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Keep, let's keep going. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But here's the key. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Can I tell you, I didn't hear one time in there that they retreat, that they back up, that they sit down. I heard that when God shows up, 
that you began to mount up to, to the level of eagles. You began to mount up with strength, with youth, with vitality, with energy, with vision, with power, with passion. You began to mount up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa. Men, he gives it. Name what you want. Name what you need because he is pouring it out. He'll give you power. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you joy. You know, sometimes you just need a new plan. Yes. This is really how this came out. Yes. I woke up one morning, and I was just, had been seeking the Lord in the middle of the night. And I woke up, and I went and sat down at my desk. And I'm going to tell you, I just had a visitation from the Lord. All of a sudden, new things just started flooding into my heart. And the things that looked, I had no answer. I didn't know what to do. Can I tell you, when God shows up, something's getting ready to change. I'm going to tell you one more time. When your God shows up, something is getting ready to change. And he's going to change what you've been asking him to change. Hallelujah. But I was sitting there, and he just began to reveal things to me. And the things that seemed so hard, all of a sudden, there were shortcuts. There was godly wisdom. I just knew it was bam, 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 bam. And that's where the cafe store came. Because he told me, he says, anytime you want to enter into a new season, take a seed with you. That's why I had you bring a seat tonight, because you're entering a new season. And I sat there, and he said, okay, I want you to go look at some things. And I went back, and I looked at shoes on the move, and I just kept looking. And the Lord said, some things need, need to be laid down, and some things need to be resurrected. And our meetings in here, it was time to resurrect these meetings in here. Where we as women are comfortable with praise and worship and the glory of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I, I just said, Lord, I'm amazed. Because what seemed so hard and what seemed so difficult was now so easy. But, you know, if you go back to the very first verse, Isaiah 43, verse 19 at the end, it says... I will even make a road in the wilderness. And I Googled, what does a wilderness really look like? And to make a road in the wilderness, it means our God is an awesome God. Amen. To make a river in the desert, it means our God is an awesome God. And I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't matter how dark it looks, how bad it looks. I don't care who's standing in the way. My God, if he can move, if he can make a river, he can move somebody out of the way. Do you hear me? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I know from what I am saying. If there's somebody blocking your blessing, somebody still in your favor, somebody stopping your promotion, somebody taking your peace, let me tell you, you get God on the scene and you say, Lord, you do a new thing in this situation. You do a new thing. You do a new thing. How many of you need a new thing? Hallelujah. He is doing it. And so I thought, okay, out of verse 29, he says, he gives. He gives what you need. Amen. And he renews. He, he makes it new again. Create in me, Lord, what I cannot do myself. And then he says that you will mount up with wings like eagles. Amen. Think about the wings of the eagle. So I just did a little bit of research. Of what does it mean? What does it mean when God says you will mount up? So here's what the Hebrew definition is of that word, a mount. It means to rise up, to cause, to ascend up at once, to exalt, to excel, to get up, to grow, to increase. It means to perfect, to prefer, to recover, to restore, to shoot forth up, 
to spring up, and it means to stir up. Sometimes we need to stir up the mess that we're, we're working with. And we need to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If this doesn't look like God right now, my Heavenly Father is not done with it. If it doesn't look like God, it doesn't sound like God, it doesn't bring peace like God, it doesn't bring joy like God, then I got to tell you, my father is not done with it. Because the new has already been determined out of heaven, and the new is springing up right now. Even if I can't see it, I know there's some rumbling in the ground, and some things are getting ready to sprout up for me. Hallelujah. 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 And so we have creative ability in us. The thing that we need, God will give you wisdom. The new that you desire, God will show you how to do it. Creativity is God's gift to us. New ways of thinking and new ways of doing. Say that with me. New ways of thinking and new ways of doing. I want you to say it really loud. New ways of thinking and new ways of doing. Father, I pray a creative anointing upon us. And I wrote this down. It takes anointed creativity to take advantage of what is in you and what is around you. It takes an anointing for you to see what truly is in you. Somebody told me the other, day, the other day, they said, you don't really see what all is in you. And I say, no, I'm, I'm just me. You know, we say that I'm just me. But the truth is, you're a powerhouse, ladies. You're a powerhouse. In you, there's so much vision. In you, there's so much ability. In you, there's so much creativity. Just think if that's in one of you, all of us in this room, just think what we could do for God if we really said, okay, God, bring in the new. Bring in the new. Hallelujah. So I thought, okay, God, we want to embrace the new. The new that God is doing in our lives. In our women's ministry, ladies, I'm asking you to embrace the new. Would you get a vision for what all God can do, what God wants to do, that you embrace the new? And this is what the Lord gave me. It says, listen, we embrace a new vision, a new passion, a new love for one another. And he said to me, arise and build, for we are fruitful and we are impactful. Amen. We are anointed women of God. We are gifted women of God. We are creative women of God. Now, for me to say that about myself, I got to tell you, that is by faith. Because when it comes to being creative, I call up Janice, call up Pastor Debbie Julian, call up somebody else, and I say, well, can we do this? Or I call up Lynn and say, can we do this? But you know what? We speak according to the word, not according to what we see or what we feel. Amen? So we walk by faith, and we declare that over us by faith. So if, if God says the creator lives, on me, lives in me, then I'm creative. Would you just say that over yourself? Then I'm creative. Hallelujah. It's important that we are. And we are adding our supply to the plan and the purpose that God has for us, this house, and God's got it. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 12, chapter, one, ver uh, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I love this. It says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, ladies, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race, say the race, my race, that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So what are you saying? He said, lay aside fear. Lay aside doubt. Lay aside worry. Lay aside failure. Lay aside your past. Lay aside offense. 
lay aside every weight that would keep you from entering into the new. I want you to know how much your Heavenly Father loves you. Man, he loves you. He treasures every one of you. He loves you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Would you read it with me? I know the thoughts that I think toward. Now, I want you to say it. I want you to say it like you are saying it to change your destiny. I want you to say it like you are changing your home. You are changing your future. You are changing your life. So say it with some boldness, okay? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. When, say when. When, one more time, when you search for me with all your heart. And I want to do Lamentations chapter 3. This is the last passage. Uh, worship team, if you'll come. Would you stand with me and would you read this with me? Lord, we thank you for your word. There's an anointing on scripture. All right? Lamentations, read it with me. Chapter 3, verse 21. This... I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. One more time. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks for him. And I go back to our, verse, our first verse, Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? It will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. 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 Did you get anything out of that? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.